seven reasons you could lose your Google account forever. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. By far, the most common topic throughout the history of Ask Leo has been account loss and recovery. Originally, it was all about Hotmail, but these days it's all about Google. People lose access to Google and Gmail accounts all too often. The result, of course, is the loss of years of email, contacts, files, and whatever other Google services they used along the way. Lockouts and loss happen not because Google's broken, even though thinking so is a very common reaction, but because of preventable mistakes and oversights. So let's review what can go wrong and how you can prevent losing your account forever. Number one, outdated recovery information. This is by far the single most common reason I see that accounts are permanently lost. For whatever reason, you have a problem signing in. No problem, you think. You head off to the Google account recovery process. As part of that process, Google asks you to enter a code sent to a phone number you no longer have. Google asks you to click on a link sent to an email address you no longer have access to. Google asks you to acknowledge a confirmation on the Google app running on a device you replaced. You get the idea. All the points of recovery that you once supplied have fallen out of date. The result? Google has no way to differentiate you from a hacker trying to break in. There's no way to prove that you are you and should be allowed back in. Review and update your recovery information regularly. Number two, weak or reused passwords. We've all heard the word about weak or easy to guess passwords. Creating and using a long, strong password is something that everybody is doing these days, right? Right? There's another drum that's been beating that I don't think people are paying as much attention to. Stop reusing passwords. Industry reports indicate that this is currently the most common form of simple account compromise. A password is discovered because of a problem with service A, and people find shortly thereafter their accounts at service B, C, and so on are also compromised because they had used that same password on all of them. For all accounts, of course, but particularly for your Google account, make absolutely certain not to use its password anywhere else. Use a password manager to keep track of them all. Number three, ignoring security warnings. We get so many warnings, legitimate, accidental, spam, that it's tempting to ignore, well, all of them. At a minimum, it's very easy not to give them the attention that they deserve. And they do deserve attention, at least enough to confidently determine whether they represent an early warning sign of a problem with your account, or they're just so much noise and spam. Take the time to learn what matters in these warnings and what a legitimate warning from your provider, like Google, looks like. Then take the time to examine them when they arrive. Acting on a legitimate warning could save your account. Number four, relying only on one device. Now, I've noticed this one myself of late. Online services are seeing and using the fact that you're signed in to multiple devices. It's almost a form of second factor authentication. You sign in to a new device and you're asked to confirm that sign in on another computer or mobile device where you're already signed in. Now, I know that not everyone has multiple devices. But if you do, it's worth signing into more than one of them. Not only can it make signing into a new device easier, but it's another mechanism services can use when confirming you are who you say you are. You may need to poke at the account from the other device occasionally to keep the sign-in active. Perhaps just check email once in a while. But it's another way to increase the odds of retaining access to your account. 
If you are signed in on only one device and that device breaks or is lost, then getting into your account on a replacement device might be more difficult than it needs to be otherwise. Number five, not enabling two-factor authentication. Tech help folks like myself, as well as most of the computer security industry, have been beating this drum for quite a while. Two-factor authentication means that even if someone gets your password, say through a breach of some sort, they still can't sign into your account. Two-factor authentication also acts as a form of recovery confirmation. The process of setting up two-factor almost always includes setting up additional backup information, such as recovery codes, that can help get you back into your account in a variety of situations. Enable two-factor authentication and keep backup codes in a safe place. It's not nearly as intrusive as you might think. Number six, using incorrect or inconsistent recovery attempts. In other words, panicking. It goes without saying that some of the people I hear from in situations like this are in a full-on panic. Understandable. Unfortunately, panicking leads to some really bad decisions. The most common error is guessing at the information you're asked to provide, whether it's your grandma's maiden name or the name of your first teddy bear. The problem with guessing is that each wrong answer could be taken as a strike against you, making it even harder to recover your account. Supplying incorrect or inconsistent information is indistinguishable from a hacker trying to get in. When that happens, Google sets the bar, the burden of proof you have to provide, higher. So, first, yeah, don't panic. Second, Keep a record of the important account details. Your password manager is the perfect place to keep this kind of information. Number seven, ignoring account activity for too long. As I hope you know by now, not signing into an account for a long time, two years in Google's case, will cause that account to be closed and its contents deleted. Now, while you and I might know this, apparently not everyone does. I occasionally get requests to help access accounts that haven't been signed into for five years or more. I think the longest was something like 12 years. Perhaps these are folks who know, but are grasping at straws. The result is the same either way. That account is gone forever. The solution is simple. Sign into your account periodically to keep it active. Bottom line, prepare for account recovery and keep things up to date. Seriously, that's what it takes to ensure you'll never lose your account. Gmail account recovery is more about prevention and planning ahead than it is about fixing problems when they arise. A little maintenance, like updated recovery information, strong password hygiene, and two-factor authentication, are the steps you need to take to ensure you'll never lose your account. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com 184417. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.